Every little thing you think that you need. Every little thing you think that you need. Every little thing that's just feeding your greed. Oh, I bet that you'd be fine without it. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Minimalist Podcast, where we discuss what it means to live a meaningful life with less. My name is Joshua Fields Milburn. And I am Ryan Nicodemus, and together we are the Minimalists. Welcome to episode number 71. Today, we're going to talk about media, and that can really mean social media. That can mean the news media. We've got some questions we're going to answer today. But Ryan, first, I, I have to tell you, this one could be a total disaster. <laughs> I, I, that's how i feel every podcast <laughs> thank you for keeping that in internalizing it <laughs> you're welcome <laughs> Suppre- that's how i feel about my life every day <laughs> <laughs> that's that good man suppress those emotions yes, yes no but i i i want to apologize in advance i over prepared for this one and we know how it, i have at least six pages of notes here and um i was up at 3 a.m this morning which is redundant, 3 this morning or 3 a.m. And uh, I was watching videos about this. St- I, I, I was, it, the, <laughs> you're, uh, the you're irony. watching videos yeah. about media. Yeah, yeah, about how to like watch fewer videos. <laughs> 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 but no, I mean, really, this is a topic that is near and dear to my heart because it is, yeah, we talk about once we get rid of the the sort of vapid problems of consumerism in our lives, and you've become a minimalist, mm-hmm. it, you 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 never get there, right? You, it's, it's always a journey toward living more intentionally, right? Yeah. And and for me, like, okay, I'm, I no longer have a shopping addiction or, right. or habit, but but there are other habits that come into place, and and especially with the way technology is changing now, mm-hmm. and 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 the way information reaches us, it reaches us in a way that is different from any other period of time. If you look at at some um, psychologists, they'll, they'll tell you, well, yes, every generation has been faced with these types of, w- with distractions, right? Sure. This is nothing new. The Facebooks and the Instagram and, and uh, CNN.com or whatever, like, it, this isn't new because we've always had distractions. You go back to the Stoics and they were like, well, y- your books are a distraction. They keep you from living uh, a real life. And, and, and so they encourage people often to get rid of their books. And, and that's not what we do. And we're not necessarily encouraging anyone to like jump off of social media or get rid of your computer. You know, we're not, we're not trying to be Luddites here. But the difference is, and, and I was really intrigued by this, um, here's some more irony for you. So Bex and I were out eating this weekend. We went to uh, James bar and there was a glowing screen on behind her head. And eventually I just had to switch her seats because I, I, I am like a three-year-old. Ella does the same thing. She sees the glowing screen and she just stares up at the glowing screen. You can't focus on the people in front of you. It's so, and, and know, it's, that's a perfect metaphor, right? Yeah. Because that's what what I, I will do. In fact, there was a study that, that I read throughout the whole process of these many pages of, of notes uh, that if you put two people in a room and you just put an amb- well, like your phone right there, even though it's an ambient phone, it's mm-hmm. turned off, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the level of connection and engagement between the two individuals in the room goes down something like 12%. And wow. even if it's a dead phone, meaning it's never worked, like it's just one of those burner phones or a demo phone. There's just something psychological that takes your attention away. Exactly. And then especially when it's on. But anyway, th- what was on on that glowing screen behind Becca's head was um, and Bex just kept looking at me like, like, what are you looking at? And I'm like, all right, turn around, look at this, because it was she knew we were going to record this podcast about media Mm -hmm. and her and i've been talking a lot about this lately and and removing those those distractions Uh, you you just put your phone in your pocket for the Mm -hmm. listeners here yes so that that is i'm going to give us 12 percent more attention (laughs) well and then it's decreased by 24 percent because you and i have glowing screens in front of both of us still (laughs) with all of our our show notes on it so beck turned around saw the screen she saw the screen man and it was uh, first off. Did you know Anderson Cooper is on sixty minutes now? Really? Yeah, I'm so out of touch with like regular cable 
television programs. I, that's not even cable. He's or sixty whatever. minutes is CBS. Right? Prime, yeah, yeah. I'm just. I'm you don't just have thinking bunny of, ears. Just thinking prime time. No, no. Uh, I don't not, think bunny. Uh, I don't think you can get channels with bunny. You can have like a special digital antenna or something, don't you? I was thinking of the bunny ears that Mariah makes you wear sometimes. <laughs> Josh, that's personal. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, Anderson, Anderson Cooper is on 60 Minutes now, and the thing they were doing, it's, it, it was called brain hacking. Was the mm-hmm. We'll put a link to this in the show notes. Sean, I sent it over to you this morning. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, there was no sound on the TV, so I'm trying to figure out. Like, But you could tell they're talking about being addicted to screens, and Anderson Cooper is giving his own sort of spiel. But they're interviewing experts, psychologists, and people in the tech industry in particular. And where I'm taking the story here is the difference between – the the distractions of today versus the distractions of yesteryear uh, that d- the, the biggest difference is that they're at, at these big companies the new media new tech companies mm-hmm. they're paying thousands of engineers to try to aggregate your attention that has never been done before in the, in, in a way like this so uh, a, a good example of this is uh, so you got thousands of engineers on twitter like basically saying hey how can we make Twitter more engaging. How can we how can we draw more eyeballs? How can we keep someone's attention longer? So that's why, like when you scroll, now the videos will automatically start playing. Or, yeah. yeah, yeah. Literally, the questions they're asking are questions like, "How can we ra- incrementally raise someone's cortisol level so they need to come back to this to get a hit of dopamine?" Oh and wow! Instagram does things now, and this is incredibly pernicious. Uh, but they they have algorithms that will hold off on your likes. So save a bunch of, you post a picture on Instagram, right? Mm-hmm. And they have, and they're doing these tests, like these experiments now with end users. You might be end user 733 for trial study 269. Mm-hmm. And they're going to send you a particular algorithm to see how you, you, you behave. So here's an example. If you post a picture and then a bunch of people like it. Um, I don't know, 100 people like it. Okay. They might save... That's the magic number for happiness, by the way. 100, 100 likes. 100 likes, well, yeah. The problem with that is it always changes, right? Once you get, <laughs> once all of your pictures start getting 100 likes, then you want 1,000 likes. I remember we, I posted one picture one time, and it got 8,000 likes. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. What if we could get to 10,000? I mean, that was my first thought. I'm That's like, funny. Hey, Josh, it doesn't matter, man. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's irrelevant. But what they'll do is you'll post that and it gets 100 likes. Mm-hmm. They'll display only 60 right away. And then they'll give mm. you 30 in a quick burst. And especially people who have these notifications turned on. Um. And, and they know that if they give you a certain threshold of likes all at once, you're more likely to go back to the app and engage. Uh, the, the more pernicious example was Snapchat. Now I've never used Snapchat. I know you've used it occasionally in yeah. the past. Um, well, now you uh, can you can do the same thing now with like Insta, Instagram, Insta Stories, right? Yeah, Facebook I think is doing it now. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. yeah. So uh, anyway, the, with Snapchat, one thing they'll do it, it's the most addictive and most used app for teens. And by the way, teens are are, are more susceptible to addiction. Uh, because of the anxiety of, of hitting puberty and, and just that, that post pubescent period. And I remember how anxious I was in high school. I'm still anxious now, but like, it's just an anxious time. You, you, you're, you're vying for attention. You're vying for acceptance, right? Yeah. In, in high school. And so these devices just amp up the volume on that. Anyway, what Snapchat does is they, they have this, uh, I guess when you can send snaps back and forth to individuals, uh, on Snapchat, well, they have this streak. Like you've talked, Josh, you've talked to Ryan 17 days in a row, and you. And what happens is they these people want to keep their streak going. They've they've gamified. They, the, the word is gamification. They've turned it into wow. You feel now compelled. It's day 18. I don't have anything to send to Ryan, but now I have to. In fact, some teens when they go on vacation, they can't have their phones with them. They'll give their Name, username and password to their friends so their friends can keep that streak going because they don't want to lose their 37-day streak or their 119-day streak. Unbelievable. And so... so um, Where does that streak get them? It doesn't get them anything other than a uh, an anxious uh, feeling if they don't if they don't continue the streak. And so it gets them anxiety. It gets them, I mean, anxiety is really just a type of fear, right? Okay. And, and so many of what's going- unbelievable, man. 
I agree. I, I think much of what's going on here is is in fact the the quote that I loved this. This was from that sixty minutes segment. I wrote it down. Uh, we the, these apps are or or just technology in general is on a race to the bottom of our brainstem. So they're just trying to reach those mammalian instincts first. And the, the only way to do that is to, to engineer it, to, to uh, uh, engineer it so that you are going after someone's fear or their pleasure. The fear of missing out, the mm -hmm. fear of breaking your streak, the fear of losing in some way, however you define losing. Losing for this person might be, oh, I broke my streak, now I gotta start all over, right? Or that the, the, the other side is pleasure happiness mm -hmm. uh, and, and and it's not real happiness it's not lasting contentment it's these little bursts so during the 60 minute segment that they uh hooked anderson cooper up to this like little brainwave thing and they were measuring his cortisol boosts as every time he would get like a little message or notification it was just enough that he didn't notice it in his physiology but his brain was constantly letting go of cortisol Wow. And and some of the stats here were staggering, Ryan. I'll try to go through through a few of these before we hop into some questions here. But so um, you know about the phantom vibrate. So you, you and oh, I yeah, dude. We used to work in telecom for a long time. And sometimes, yeah, you feel your phone vibrate. Yeah. You yeah. reach down. There's no notification or like you feel it vibrate and you reach down and realize that your phone is not even on you. Exactly. It's not even there. Sometimes 75 percent of people feel phantom vibrations regularly yeah you know i i was getting that the only way i could stop that was turning off my notifications mm. and i do i don't get the phantom vibrate anymore because you, you, i you, might get one or two phone calls a day not even that i'm on average i'll get one phone call a day but before it was like when, especially when we had the blackberries back in the corporate world it was constant vibrate oh yeah constant yeah. i got 250 emails a day and that was a, a lot it's a lot now but it was especially a lot for back then yeah and, and on top of that dozens if not hundreds of text messages you, you and i were, were managing a bunch of stores you're constantly in contact mm. pinging people back and forth and that vibrate was just constant and so it, it, that i mean my cortisol levels must have been through the roof back then and it led to a lot of health problems by the time i was in my early 30s and i'm still dealing with i, I was at the doctor yesterday going through a, a, a hormone checkup and I've been doing some, some hormone testing recently and I, I've improved significantly from last summer, mm -hmm. but uh, I still have I still have a long way to go. And, and so that's why this is so near and dear to me is I want to make sure that I'm limiting my stress levels, but also I, I don't want to miss out. I don't want to be the old fogey who is just like, well, that stuff's bad. Let me get back to reading my newspaper. Yeah. And I remember the day before computers. <laughs> right. 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 <laughs> <laughs> that's how I live my life. Yeah, you don't want to be a, uh, uh, well, what, what's the word I'm looking for? A Luddite? Yes. What's the other one, though? Not like ascetic. Ascetic. That's what it is. Ascet so an ascetic is a person who intends to suffer, they, they try to suffer. Uh, um, uh, maybe you were thinking of like maybe a stoic. Yeah. Um, but yeah, maybe Luddite was a, is a better. Anyway. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I'm with you. So the original Luddites, they, they really tried to smash the, I mean, that, that was the group, the, the Luddites, they tried to smash the printing press because they were afraid of this technology was putting them out of business, basically. Wow. So that's where the term Luddite comes from, is like people who eschew technology and, and think all te technological advances are bad. That is nonsense. We all realize that we're in a much better world today because of technology, but we also need to put some parameters around that. And and I think when we hear some of the, the some of the statistics, and I was trying to get into that, but I I digressed. But here's here's a, a few staggering statistics for me. Uh, this one isn't a, stati a stat, but I I just like the term. Um, someone's called it the the 79th organ, the smartphone that's in our hand, our 79th organ. And it feels that way sometimes. I know I, uh, so when I went to the doctor yesterday, I, I left my phone in the car and uh, I did it on purpose. And I, I do that quite frequently on purpose, but mm -hmm. even more so now, I, I'm, I'm trying to be cognizant of that. But man, I get that little twinge of panic when I reach for, I just touch my pocket and it's not there. And there's that little, <gasps> oh my goodness, what, what am I supposed to do with this time? Mm -hmm. Well, I could, I could do nothing. Uh, that's why you and I created the nothing app. <laughs> <laughs> but it's on your phone. That's in your car, so it doesn't really help you there. <laughs> I know. I was just itching for my nothing app. How can I do nothing without my app? Um, a little white piece of paper and look at it. 
<laughs> Ooh, that is brilliant. <laughs> Patent pending. <laughs> the Nothing app, now in print. <laughs> 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 so um, yeah, the 79th Oregon. This one was the most depressing to me, Ryan. There was a study. Uh, it was in Britain, so I'm assuming you know it's Western world. It's going to be fairly similar here. <laughs> Wait, let me guess this statistic. Yeah. Every time you check your phone, a puppy dies. <laughs> Two puppies die. <laughs> oh my, that is a depressing t- statistic. <laughs> what else you got? Um, on top of that, uh, <laughs> they did a study that. If you had to choose between going without sex or going without your phone for a year, what would you pick? Dude, going without my phone for a year. Yeah, you'd much rather go without your phone, Yes, right? hands yeah. down. 33% of people, one third, one out of three said, I'd rather have my phone than have sex. And wow. I, it was just, I mean, it, that one was like almost upsetting to me because here's why I could relate to it. I remember back in my 20s, like, my marriage was failing what way before way before I acknowledged it was failing, and I probably would have been part of that thirty three percent so well it's not I'm not really having sex anyway, and so I guess I'll take my phone because I need it wow i i uh this reminds me of a stat came out last year, maybe it was twenty fifteen all these years run together now, but it was uh it was over thirty percent of people admit to like checking their phone. Like while having sex. Yeah, yeah. Well, and and uh, millennials, so the generation that we are either are or not part of, we're like right on the cusp of Gen X and and, and we can claim it when it's convenient for us. Right. We can deny it when it's convenient. <laughs> That's right. Um, but uh, millennials, so people who are right now like uh, eighteen to thirty-five, mm-hmm. uh, they um, ha- ha- a ridiculous amount, uh, upwards of over eighty percent have have at least check their phone one time during sex mm. at one point. That is unbelievable. Can you imagine text messaging during sex? No. No. Or maybe there's some kind of like thrill there or something where it's like. But yeah. I mean, there's a camera on your phone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, that makes way more sense. Yeah, but that's not. <laughs> <laughs> How could I go without my phone if I'm going to have sex? I have to film everything, right? <laughs> Uh, no, I mean, but so, so yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll dive into that. Let's see if there's any more. Oh, dude, this one is uh, the average person right now checks their phone 150 times per day. Mm. It's a 2016 stat. Uh, the average millennial is on their phone for more than five hours a day. Wow. And here's, here's the shocking part. Gen Xers, Mm -hmm. slightly more than that. Unbelievable. Yeah. So, uh, and then uh, we're also so we're checking 150 times, but we're also checking it every 15 minutes. And over 50 percent of the time we check it, it's not because there's a notification. Yeah. It's other than there's that that notification in our brain. We've we've wired in a habitual notification. Oh my goodness! Every 15 minutes, you could I have be to one of those it. engineers. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, and we'll get to that. Well, actually, how do you make the brain give notifications? That's how you do it with cortisol. Well, uh, well, should we talk about the app right now, or are we going to wait for that? I think we well, let's wait till the first caller. I think there's some good stuff, or maybe it's the second caller. I don't know. But okay. uh, before before we get into uh, the app, there was another app that I wanted to talk about, just because we're talking about the gamification. Mm-hmm. Well, one of the engineers was uh, who who I saw on the, the 60 Minutes piece, and there's a bunch of like overtime clips that I watched about it and uh, he was tired of tricking people Mm -hmm. into doing stuff with his apps basically for the companies he he worked for as a contractor and what what he did was uh, he created a new app it it was called space okay and you've never heard of it I'm, I'm certain of that because it doesn't exist in the app store because Apple refused to carry the app in their app store. Here's why they refused to carry it. It's not because it was a bad app. So here's what it did. Anytime you engage with a social media platform, so you have you have Facebook on your phone, yeah. you have Twitter on your phone, right. whatever. It, if you go click on the Instagram icon, okay. the space app interrupts and it says, let's breathe together for 12 seconds. That's oh, it. Wow. Let's just slow down and breathe. And, and, and Apple's response to that was, well, if, uh, if it limits the amount of of engagement with other apps on the phone, we're not we're not willing to put it in the app store. Wow! And that's really unfortunate to me, man, because yeah. I really like Apple's products. I think they make really great hardware. Uh, they make okay software a lot of times, but um, 
it, it's just disappointing to see that because yeah. that's something I would have paid for because yeah. it, I think it, it allows us to retrain ourselves and regain some of that self-control. It's a great reminder. Like I, there's nothing I can do for these next 12 seconds and it's not enough to do something else. So I might as well just breathe. Yeah. You know, we're supposed to take six breaths a minute uh, and, and we are doing something like 20 or 30 breaths a minute because we're breathing so shallowly. We're not using the full capacity of, of our lungs. Right. Right. And so I, when you and I were at, at yoga this weekend, we went to a yoga class and, we are not the quintessential yogis. There's like everyone else in the class, Dude, like their feet like, are behind their heads. I could tell, like, well, he just, like, it must be the same people in that class. Uh-huh. Because, you know, when he was doing the, I think it's like a sun salutation or whatever uh, circuit uh-huh. that, like, they go in. I just remember, like, at a certain point, I'm like, all right, I'm just going to stop faking this. Uh-huh. And I'm just going to, like, stand here and, like, try to follow. Anyway, I just was not very... uh not very in sync with everyone else with the, the salutation. <laughs> I'm like looking at Mariah. I'm like, he's like, uh, you know, downward dog, Cobra, upward dog, bend over, back to the knit and grab your ankles, did it at a warrior three. And I'm like, what's warrior three? <laughs> like I know one and two, but I didn't even know there was a, is there a warrior four? Oh my uh, God. I look over, you have a bow and arrow. <laughs> what isn't it? Um, but man, yeah, I, he was talking about how we, we don't breathe enough and how we, we use only 60% of our lungs or something. Right. right yeah. And because yeah. We're, we're, we're sitting at these desks all day and we're just like breathing really shallow and, mm. and, and, and pausing and taking those deep breaths. It, it does make a considerable difference mm-hmm. on your stress levels as Absolutely. well. So it cha- yeah. it's, it, it's one of the best ways to change your state. In fact, this morning, like I was super tired because I got up way too early. I was excited to, to record this today. And so I'm like, I got to do more research. And and so uh, I, I, by 8 o'clock this morning, I was super tired. So I just went out and walked for 45 minutes, like really briskly. And it was like 30 degrees outside. But, uh, man, it, it, it helped wake me up because it got me breathing again, right? It's the reason people take up smoking. I mean, talk about a, a bad habit. And really, that's what we're talking about, <laughs> about, uh, about today. I just want to be clear. We're not encouraging people to smoke. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, uh, but fa- I think what you're saying is, is like when someone takes up smoking, it's because it forces them to take in those large breaths. It provides that certainty. And, and at, at regular intervals, too, your body feels much calmer when, they, when it does it, right? Uh, can you imagine if, if we all just took smoke breaks but didn't smoke and we just breath breaks. Yeah. Just you, you go do a, a breath break every hour. You're every, so progressive. I mean, how, <laughs> um, I'm going to go take my smoke break. I didn't know you smoke. I don't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but I, I, I found that, uh, when I breathe, it totally calms me down. In fact, the, the, another part of the research I was doing, uh, I saw that it, your, your body will relax significantly. I do this when I, when I do my, my daily physical therapy. I, uh, when I'm, I, I do a wall sit, so I sit against a wall at like a, what is that, a 90 degree, then a 90 degree angle. Um, my, you know, you get it, right? <laughs> yes, you sit Here, on the like wall. This. You sit Hold on, on the wall. <laughs> you sit on the wall at, with 100 deg- 180 degrees total. I got you. <laughs> no, I know what you're saying, man. Josh is sitting against the wall like there's, a, like he's sitting on a chair, but there is no chair. Yeah, 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 exactly. And it's a metaphor. <laughs> I don't know for what. <laughs> the emperor's new chair. Yes. Um, anyway, um, I, I will do that, and then I take these deep breaths, and if you breathe out for at least eight seconds, your body knows that it's in no danger because I've got this abundance, this luxurious abundance of free air. Like Clearly, I'm not being chased by a lion, and so your body just calms down and so so that's one of the things i do if you if you breathe in deeply and then breathe out for at least eight seconds it's actually harder than it sounds like because that one outward continuous breath but man it really changes your state so what other stats you got before we uh yeah yeah questions let's see what else we have here if there's anything um these are all the stats for now so okay let's uh uh, should we just should we dive into the questions let's do it all right our first question is from michelle in san francisco hi I am wondering what you do about the onslaught and deluge of media that we have every day. I've signed off of almost all social media sites. I rarely look at the Internet except to see what's going on in the news, and usually the news can be pretty depressing. And I'm wondering about the effect of the news diet 
would have on our minimalist lifestyles. So Ryan, I know you've been dealing with less news in your life recently. Yeah. Right? Ever since our uh, distractions episode. The, or the, the values episode. Or the values episode. Did we, we do distractions? Well, we were something? talking about what, what, what distraction. So there were the imaginary values and you said, oh, for that's you, what it was. Yeah. News was yeah. an imaginary value, at, at least at that time. Yeah. And no, I, I deleted my apps. And dude, I got to tell you, it, I will go like on the browser every once in a while. Uh, so uh, just to give you an example, when I had, when I had like BBC and then like uh, Apple has this news app where it just streams uh -huh. everything into your phone. Okay. Um, dude, I, I would spend on average per day, I'd probably spend an hour, maybe even longer. Mm. And I was like, I was, I was twitching and I didn't even like realize how much it was affecting me until that, po that podcast that we re re recorded. And, um, yeah, those first couple of days, dude, it was hard. Cause I was like, kept twitching for news and I'd go on the browser. Mm -hmm. But then like, as soon as I go on the browser now, like I am reminded how useless the news sites are. Uh. It's like, I just, I just realized like, oh wow, like these headlines aren't that important. Even like with some like terror attacks or like, you know, somebody stealing a, a, a truck and, you know, running over. I mean, all these things that happen, they're not... It's not important for my life. I mean, my, you know, my feelings and my heart certainly goes out to any victims of any, any of those situations. But uh, all that does is cause panic and stress for me. Yeah. I, I remember this, like, uh, toward the end of last year, uh, there was a time where you were consuming a lot of news. And I think a lot of the Western world, especially, especially the United States, was consuming a lot of news. And you were visibly more upset Hmm. And not even visibly sometimes. You would even like voice it. You'd oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm distraught. Or, like, guys, like before we record this podcast, I got to get this out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it's because of those headlines. And now, uh, like this morning, uh, Mariah and I woke up. I am, you know, downstairs, like making coffee, getting ready for the podcast. And I can hear Mariah like moaning and groaning. And uh. it, she's like, and she'll start reading headlines to me. And I'm like... Oh, what is that about? And then she'll start telling me. And then, like, if it, if it gets to be too much, I'm like, all right, this is why, like, that <laughs> that stress that you're feeling right now, like, mm -hmm. that is what I'm trying to avoid. Um, but yeah, man, that the the news can definitely clutter can clutter my mind if I allow it to. Yeah, and I think I think for me, I I don't. There's no news sites I go on to or anything like that. So I'm I'm on pretty much a news diet. I uh, where I just. A news fast, really. Yeah. I mean, I get a lot of news from Twitter. That's where I'll get like some headlines and stuff. And y so you have a you a curated feed of of of, I, of of places that you follow that are. I don't know if you're anything like me, but that it's on both sides of the spectrum. Well, it's usually like the people I follow, like uh, Colin Wright, for example. He's always got some like cool science news stuff that he'll retweet. Um, every once in a while, yeah, just someone who I'm following will retweet something. That's really good. Or share something. But it, it, those I find are more meaningful. That stream is more meaningful for me than having the BBC News app or than having like that, that news app that, uh, app that pumps all the news outlets into your phone. In a way, you're letting people you trust, like Colin, curate some news for you. Because right. Because he may be better equipped like here, to do something like, yeah, like here's that. Here's some news. Like, is it... Is it uh, Urgent news, no, but it's the most interesting of the news, and I know that 99% of the news stories that show up on my Twitter feed are not going to stress me out. If anything, it's more informative mm -hmm. of some type of new algorithm they're working on for prime numbers or some scientific discovery. Like It's more applicable to our everyday life instead of just uh, creating or disturbing you know, your the state that you're in, if that makes any sense. It does. So, so the person we're talking about is Colin Wright, and he does a really good job with his Twitter account in particular of, of tweeting out useful things. Uh, you can follow him at Colin is my name. If you're looking for a useful place to follow, he, he certainly puts out a lot of uh, just really good different types of news. And that's really what I want to say was really interesting here, Ryan. You said science news. So I think it's also important for us to delineate the different types of news as well, mm, right? Yeah. So there can be science news, and in many cases that will stress you out a lot less than political news, right? right? <laughs> Unless it was some type of like asteroid heading for Earth. Yeah, and then you have a no right... No chance of anyone surviving. <laughs> well, yeah, then, then well, <laughs> I mean... It, it, 
unless you're the Buddha or something, you're going to be pretty stressed out about that. <laughs> right. um, and and the, my point is when something that, that's asteroidic in nature, uh, it's, it, it, when it reaches that level, it's going to reach me somehow. Mm. I don't have to be subscribed to right. a million different news feeds. It will find its way to me. Uh, in fact, like with the when the, the Syria thing happened uh, this past week with the bombing uh, yeah. in Syria, it was um, like I had several people just send me a text message. Say, here's what's going on in Syria right now. I'm like, oh, OK. Like yeah. the most important news makes its way to me. And even that one, like you said, there's nothing I could really do to take action at the time. And so I asked myself a, qu- a couple of questions with respect to the news that I, and I'll talk to you about how I get news because Twitter is is one way that, that I'll, I'll, I'll curate my news. I don't follow a bunch of people on Twitter, but I do use it to follow uh, the places that are most interesting to me to get the headlines, but I don't check it regularly. Mm-hmm. And in fact, we'll, we'll get to that a little bit, uh, a little bit more on, on the next question. But the, the other thing that I do is I ask two questions. Is this useful? Mm-hmm. So is the news useful in your life? And if so, that's great. Because we'll often say, yeah, it's useful. It adds value to my life. But is it the most useful use of that time? Right. And this is a good time to to transition into the app you and I have been using this past weekend. We, we started doing some phone tracking. Uh, uh, the app is called Moment. And I put it on my phone just because I knew we were we were going to record this episode. And I was disturbed by the amount of time because I'm pretty good about using my phone, putting it in the car. I never have it on the table in front of me. Mm-hmm. If uh, Bex and I are at dinner and I need to get it out for some reason, I'll say, hey, would it be okay with you if I do this real quick? Here's why I want to do it. Not that I need her permission, but I, I want to show whoever I'm with that I care enough about our interaction but even considering all that and all of my intentionality that goes into the smartphone use, I found, well, I found two things disturbing. So I'll pull it out and look at my average real quick. So first off, let me acknowledge this. I, by putting this tracker on my phone, I immediately noticed that I wanted to reach for the phone less because I knew I was being, I, oh, was, I was being tracked. Absolutely. So my numbers would actually be higher than this. I am, I am absolutely certain of that. So let me just talk about this. So you, how many full days do you have so far? Oh, I, I accidentally opened the Nothing app again. <laughs> it's right next to my tracker. <laughs> uh, for those of y'all who don't know what the Nothing app is, it's an April Fool's joke that we did with our good friend Matt Diavella, who directed our documentary. I can't uh, believe you downloaded the app and still have it. That's pretty funny. I do still have the <laughs> app. But, uh, it, I, every time I can delete like a little window icon off uh-huh. of my phone. Like it gives me so much joy. Ah, that's nice. So I'm like, so that's dude, a I'm like oh, I haven't dopamine. used this. I've used this app in forever. I'm going to go and get rid of it. That's like the dopamine of intentionality there, man. Yeah. That, so um, let's see if I go to this. So let's just talk about what moment is. I was in the, the sauna this weekend on, on Sunday morning and Bex and I were talking about it and I was talking about the usage that's on this thing. And so it tracks all of your usage but it also will track your usage per app, or yeah, per app that you're using, right? You, you have to take a screenshot in the morning. It sends you a reminder to take a screenshot at some point in the morning. So well, if you do that each morning, uh, you take a, a screenshot of your battery screen, basically. Yeah. It, this breaks it down by app. How did I have. you? Oh, I didn't realize you could do that. There's a video in there. It shows you how to do it. But uh, you won't. So there's no way to go back and like see what I spent on Sunday. No, you have to do. You have to have a screenshot each day. Okay. You can do it by the week, but then it's it's less accurate, obviously. Hmm. But uh, it's just one. It's one quick screenshot in the morning, and and I mean it takes five seconds to do, but it's very useful for you me. You take a screenshot of the app, like when you pull. No, it up. you take a screenshot. I'll of, look at the video. Yeah, you take a screenshot yep. of. Uh, you go into the settings and click battery, and mm-hmm. then it shows you what your battery usage is for each app that you have, and it will show you what you're using. So. Um, Anyway, I was in the sauna and I was talking to this this couple who had a few teenage kids. So Ella's three, so she doesn't have a phone. She's at least one year away from having a phone. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean that that's sadly what yeah. used to happen with us in the corporate world. There were a lot of five year olds who got sold phones when we worked in telecom, and uh, and I mean quite often those parents come in and wanting that phone for their kids. Yeah. Other times it was <laughs> us encouraging our employees right. to sell phones. It's only to fifteen those bucks a month. Right. And, and so, no, obviously a five-year-old does not need a phone. I'm sure there's, yes, you don't, you don't need to tweet us telling us there's the one circumstance I get. There are exceptions to every rule. Sure. So, uh, but most five-year-olds 
or a three-year-old. Ella will be four next month, and she does not need a phone. But the couple I was talking to in the sauna, they were like, wait, what? what? They overheard just Bex and I talking, wait, what is this app? And it's a free app, but there are like paid upgrades and stuff. So you can do whole family tracking plans, but you can turn off your kid's phone at certain times. Like if you always eat dinner between six and seven, you can have it off. Like so their phone just is functionally disabled Mm -hmm. between five and six. You can do it so that after 7 p.m., the phone is disabled and they can't use it. Or it's disabled during the day except for emergencies. I love that idea, man, of like being able to, uh, and I think the app even pitches it that way of like making time uh, during dinner to where like the family has to at least put their phones away. They have no choice but to put their phones away. Yeah, absolutely. And so I I think that, well, that, that actually reminds me, Ryan, I was, the first thing I wrote down here is uh first thing i wrote down on my third page of notes uh we we were listening to this this podcast episode that the big think podcast episode okay and um it was with an author his name is adam alter and he wrote a book called irresistible and it's about technology's role in our lives today and one of the tips that he gave so if you have like the moment app that's great but you can also just put put some fairly um, basic rules in place. Keep your phone somewhere where you need to walk to it in order to get to it, right? Mm-hmm. And, and that will, A, limit the amount of times you can go reach for it because you have to do it with intention. Mm-hmm. But also, it will it will force you to think about, do I actually need to do this? Yeah, it's Is like, this it doesn't make useful? you breathe, but it's kind of like that app where it's like, Right. Hey, do you really want to go look at your phone right now? Do you really want to look at this app? Yeah, it's like it's in in fact even asking yourself a question like that. There's a mm-hmm. lot of great questions that you can ask yourself. You know, like what would the best version of myself do mm-hmm. right now? Would the best version of myself pull this out and look at the phone at the urinal? I don't know. I don't think so. For me personally, the answer is definitely no. Yeah. And and the, the the question for you is I, I don't know. I don't know what the answer is for you. Is it appropriate for you to do that at the urinal? Does it matter? That's really up to you. For me, absolutely not. That's not what the best version of, of myself would do. And here's the other question after I've been looking at this tracking app, Ryan, is how could I have better spent that time? Yeah. And, and so uh, I gave you that stat earlier that millennials spend five hours a day on their phone. Thankfully, I don't spend five hours a day. So I've had it on here since uh last friday we're recording this on a tuesday and so so saturday sunday you got three full days basically i have friday saturday sunday monday four days okay okay so uh because i downloaded friday morning gotcha gotcha and so all right so what's your average well so it it varies time. so again i i think that my average dropped down significantly so bex and i spent the whole weekend together we did all kinds of really cool stuff and uh well actually so friday was uh, i did at one hour and nine minutes Mm -hmm. and on saturday it was one hour and 11 minutes sunday was only 46 minutes and the the interesting thing about about that was bex and i went to the float tanks for 90 minutes so Mm -hmm. i I certainly couldn't have had my phone in the float tank right Mm -hmm. then me and you and bex and mariah we went to yoga that was another roughly 90 minutes right and so yeah, that's a large chunk of my day right there. And then also in the morning, we were in the sauna for over an hour. And so uh, that's at least four, maybe even five hours that I wouldn't have had any access to my phone whatsoever. I shouldn't have had it, had any access. Right. Uh, and that doesn't include meals and all this other stuff. But I still spent 46 minutes on my phone. And then the following day, Monday... I spent two hours and 46 minutes. That was yesterday. Hmm. Two hours and 46 minutes. And I actually feel better about that one than I do the previous days. And, and let me talk about why. I, I think that, so it was Bex and I spending a weekend together. And I'm looking at this. I spent on Saturday, I spent an hour and 11 minutes on my phone. What could I have, I, what could have I done better with that time? And I, I look at these different apps and it's like, you did messages for 13 minutes you were on the home lock screen for 12 minutes and there was a bunch of other sort of one minute things. I was on Instagram for seven minutes. Um, all right. Then yesterday, the two hours and 46 minutes, I picked up my phone 45 times. Okay. Mm-hmm. And on, I was on Facebook for 31 minutes. Mm. Now that was all during, I don't ever get on Facebook. I don't like Facebook personally, but that was, we did a Facebook live session for the people who do get value from, from Facebook. So that was, 
So I do feel good about that, right? Like that was an intentional use of the phone. Like mm -hmm. we were broadcasting to an audience. Instagram was 23 minutes. I don't even remember looking at Instagram yesterday, but apparently I fell down a rabbit hole for 23 minutes. <laughs> wow. I don't remember. And then Safari was 18 minutes yesterday. Well, that was me going over test results with my doctor on my phone. Mm. And so I feel totally fine with that, right? Uh, my home lock screen, 17 minutes. So that's probably listening to podcasts or checking the time, that kind of thing. Messages, 17 minutes. That's useful. I was on Twitter for 17 minutes. I don't remember getting on Twitter. That is crazy. Maybe yesterday. it was Ella. <laughs> she stole she, your phone. She, she was does, checking her Ellis at Ellis Sandwich account. She does tweet quite a bit. <laughs> Tell me some uh, things I say. <laughs> she does say that. Uh, I was on YouTube for 16 minutes. Um, Man, I wish I would have known about this screen capture thing. Yeah. I thought yeah, I thought I'd upgrade it to get the individual. No, no, and it, then the I, individual results. I was I'll on overcast. Track of that this week and let you know where I'm at next yeah, week. Well, I was on overcast for nine nine minutes, which is the the podcast. I was on the phone for nine minutes, which that's cool. Um, photos for four minutes. That that seems productive to me. Looking through photos. I mean, it can be at least. I was on my calendar for two minutes. Definitely needed that. And so yesterday, I mean, there was. There were certainly some misses here. I could have done better. But I, I think I needed my phone for at least two hours yesterday. But I look at it this weekend. I'm like, I, I wasted time with Bex so I could check a phone at some point. Hmm. And that just it just doesn't feel good to me, man. Is it useful? Yes. Is it the most useful use of my time? No, obviously not. And I think I do a good job. But I, I this is going to help me do a lot better job, I think. And um, Yeah, definitely. Um, I've, so I've got some like just high level stats. Uh, yesterday I was two hours and 46 minutes, but I woke up at like, wait, we had the same exact time. <laughs> what, did you, what did you have yesterday? Was it two forty six? That's hilarious. So. How do I go back? Um, how does this phone no, work? I, I will tell you though, that it definitely was like two hours that had to have been reading. I wish I had the individual tracker thing, but, but, uh, I woke up like three o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. and like when I wake up, like I'll you know, put the, the night mode on so the blue light isn't keeping me up and I'll sit there and read until I get sleepy. Yeah, but if you and leave I, it on airplane mode, it doesn't track it. Oh. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I'm glad we're lear I'm learning how to use this app now. And so I think that's the point. Like, it, we think we're using the phone one way. I literally don't remember getting on Twitter yesterday and I was there for 17 minutes. That's hilarious. Yeah, uh, so on average, I'm at like, and then I was an hour and 42 on Sunday. But see, checking the, like, uh, doing the admin stuff for the minimalist Facebook, mm -hmm. I would, dude, we need to get rid of Facebook and email by the end of the year. <laughs> well, let's talk about that. Dude, that's the most, like, talk about instant stress. And then it's on my mind until I get down to zero notifications. Yeah, I, well, I, I, I remember getting on Facebook last year, and I figured out how to check messages at one point. Like, I didn't know, there's, like, a, I guess, a personal message on there or whatever, and I just had hundreds, if not thousands of messages. And, and I'm like, well, I'm not even going to try to go. <laughs> right. I mean, that's, like, that's the worst way to contact me. So, uh, but in, in terms of notifications, there are a couple apps I do have. Noti I turn them off for everything, including text messages. Uh, I get a vibrate for phone calls. Uh, I, I get this, the, this moment app. The only time they ever see a notification is to take your screenshot in the morning. Mm. So you take your screen and, and then if you ever put your phone in airplane mode, it just lets you know, uh, tracking is disabled uh, while it's in airplane. So that, that's a good hack. If you put this thing on airplane mode, it's a paperweight, uh, but you can still read on it, right? Yeah. And and so, uh, and actually, look, look, it just happened right now because my phone is on airplane mode. It said uh, tracking has been paused because you're in airplane mode. Mm. And so I and then the other the other app that I have a notification for, and this one actually has a vibrate on it as well, is the parking app that that's here in Missoula because if oh it'll let you know like when your time is expired. Yeah. Yeah, and so um, that way I don't get any more parking tickets. So that one, that one's actually helpful. Out of all the people, out of all the friends I have in Missoula, you've gotten the most parking tickets for sure. I'm sure I've gotten more parking tickets here than I just forget to pay the meters, I know, man. man. Like I it's, just, I, it's never intentional. Yeah, I, I've gotten one, and it was for that exact reason. I was like, oh yeah, the meter. I'll just sh show up. Like I'm oh, like, is yeah. it today Saturday? <laughs> is it a free? It, it is somewhere. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so I alluded to this earlier, but let's at least talk about it real quick. The uh, Think Again podcast—it's it, a big thing. It's a 
Um, it's a podcast where they interview people and, and just talk about different topics. And they interviewed Adam Alter, and uh, he he wrote that book Irresistible. And there was there was actually let's just put a link to this. I was going to read from it, but to save time here, Sean, there I, I sent you a link this morning to this Wired article. It's a it is a excerpt from his book Irresistible. And so the in the interview, he just talks about how we have, I mean we've. We, we've grown so addicted, but there's two types of addiction. And for millennia, we have had, um, uh, how, is it substance? Yeah, substance addiction. So like alcohol. Yeah, or drugs. I got drugs. You. Um, and, but now we have these behavioral addictions. And the one exception is gambling. Gambling has been around as an addiction for a while. And within the last few few decades, the last hundred years for sure, they have gamified the heck out of gambling so that it is it is uber addictive. Mm -hmm. But other than that, we have not evolved to be able to deal well with behavioral addictions. <laughs> and, and so this this phone in my pocket, this news that is always coming to me on the tablet or whatever else that, that is in front of me, this is a new type of addiction. And I love the way in that podcast, Ryan, he, he talked about addiction. He, he talked about it, it. It's when you want something but don't like it. Hmm. And I mean, it, it was like when you think about a, her, a heroin addict doesn't like the fact that he is a heroin oh, addict no. anymore. No, no. And, any drug addict like soon, like as they're, as they're taking the drug and like the placebo effect starts to kick in just because their body knows they're about to get that drug. Uh -huh. Like as soon as they feel calm, well, at least for me, like every time I'd feel calm, I'm like, oh, man, I really shouldn't be doing this. Mm -hmm. Like I wish I didn't have to take this drug to feel calm. No, you're absolutely right. It is, it is. Uh, you wanted it, but you didn't like it. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, the only thing, the only th exception to that would be like coffee. I love, I love me some coffee. <laughs> right. Uh, but I, I understand what you're saying though. Yeah. For and, all intents and purposes for this conversation. But what you, you, and you want, you, you want coffee, right? But you also don't want 20 cups in a day. Right. And, I also don't want the stained teeth. Right. Right. <laughs> and, but you don't want those 20 and you wouldn't actually, you would end up not liking it at that point as right. well. Right. So it's, there is some threshold with coffee sure. where you're like, all right, like there's diminishing returns here. This is awful. <clears throat> but anyway, he in there in in the podcast, I'll, I'll just leave off on one last thing here is ultimately there aren't no one's going to provide the solution for you. The the FDA isn't going to step in and nor do we want them to step in and regulate the, the technology, whatever government agency stuff. I mean, they did this for cigarettes, obviously. Right. Mm -hmm. And and there there will probably be some really compelling arguments that the consequences of technology addiction especially for people who are teens right now are going to be long lasting the same way uh, addiction to tobacco is uh, has long term consequences we didn't know the consequences of long term tobacco use in the 30s the 40s mm -hmm. and the 50s that's why you go back and look at photos or video of people back then everyone was smoking smoking while they're pregnant yeah yeah it's my mom smoked while she was pregnant in the <laughs> 80s <laughs> uh, but she was born in 1945 and yeah. like she was, she was used to you know, that, that, that culture. Right. Yeah. That's and, crazy. and so, um, we, we, that has been replaced with this new drug and there are rehab centers all over the place now, especially for teens where they take away their phones. And, and on the 60 minutes piece, I saw that w one kid was like, well, what do I, what am I supposed to do with my hands now? They took my phone away. What do I, I don't know what to do with my hands. Wow. And, and it's that addictive. And so uh, the thing he talked about was, was self-control in this podcast, uh, the Think Again podcast, uh, uh, Adam Alter, uh, I'm talking about here. He, you know, if you go to a grocery store and they have these like 100 calorie snack packs, mm -hmm. the, you know that it, they obviously cost way more. It's like a thing of Chex Mix and it's like $8 for six packs or something, right? It's right. an absurd amount. But you could buy you could buy that the same ingredients for two dollars or whatever. What you're you're not paying for the ingredients. You're paying because you're outsourcing your self control. Yeah, you're paying for the portion control. Yes. Yeah. yeah, and you're letting someone else do do the control for you. So I'm going to encourage you to listen to that podcast. We'll put a link to that in the show notes. And then one last thing for Michelle here, Ryan. Uh, this this quote stood out to me. It, it was from Dan Savage and. 
he he was talking about it with respect to uh, video games and then also for kids and then porn for adults mm-hmm. he was talking to his his little kid about like the game or the tv it wasn't a video game it was him watching tv and he said hey son are you are you having fun right now watching that and the kid's like well, yeah this is great i think i think of ella with this too because she loves watching peppa pig like peppa pig is just the bee's knees to her man <laughs> And uh, uh, and she she loves watching it and and with Dan he'll say are you having fun and he's like yeah this is great and he goes no you're not what you're not having fun you're watching other people have fun yeah or you're, in, you're or having characters. fun watching other people have fun right <laughs> right I mean <laughs> and, and so I, I think that's the thing to keep in mind with with uh, any of any of this stuff like when we're participating in incessant checking. Mm-hmm. It mimics the the fun and the the pleasure centers of the brain, mm. but it's not a real it's not the real experience of outside of the glowing screen. And so I, I want anyone who's listening to this to keep that in mind. There's nothing wrong with the tool, but we need to take it back as a tool and stop bludgeoning our our neighbors to death. It's like a knife. You know, a knife can be used to make a really great meal, or it can be used to to kill your neighbor. And we need to stop doing that metaphorically with, with our technology. And the only way for us to do that is for us to sort of self-regulate. Yeah. I think this is a really good, uh, just uh, the phone usage is a really good example of like, well, people always ask us, well, okay, now that you guys are minimalists, like now what do you do? Like, you know, uh, uh, and how do I get to that point where I can look at myself and say like, well, now, you know, I'm a minimalist. And at the end of the day, I mean, what do we always say is like, hey, there is no end of this journey. It's just, you know, constantly looking at that next horizon. But if you think about your phone, there isn't, it, you could put all the best habits in place and keep that going for six months. Right. If you stop it after six months, you're going to fall right back into wherever you were, you know, before you started putting in those good habits. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I think that it's it's about, yeah, man, finding those good habits to incorporate, uh, putting some restrictions on yourself having a little bit more self-control and the more you do it the easier it gets but we have to always keep ourselves in check always with yeah. with uh, the, the, the these types of things because otherwise you're gonna have to go without and that's not that's not the solution here no. if you have uh, a person who's an alcoholic can go without without alcohol without any consequences but a person who who is addicted to email or addicted to their computer or whatever they generally have to use that you know you have to have an email address to get a job these days right Mm -hmm. um or to apply for a a visa a work visa or i mean there are there are so many reasons that you need an email address so it's 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 not the same type of addiction because we're forced to to be a part of that at least to some extent Mm. and and so it's really about pulling back the reins as as you said ryan Uh, michelle before before we move on to our next question uh, you're in San Francisco, and we are coming to San Francisco. In fact, we're coming to 46 different. I'm sorry, 47 different cities on the Less Is Now tour. So, Sean, if you could reach out to Michelle and get her a couple tickets if she's interested in going to our San Francisco event. That's uh, during the first leg of the tour. 19 cities are already announced over at LessIsNow.com. By the time this uh, this episode airs, we will be we'll we'll have already had our first four. Tour. We're actually uh, so we're recording this the Tuesday before we leave to, to go to this first little wave of the tour. We're going to be in uh, Pittsburgh, Burlington, Boston, and, and Portland, Maine. But if you're hearing this, it's too late. We've already been to those cities, and boy, were those great events, weren't they, Ryan? Oh, man, I couldn't believe what happened in Burlington. <laughs> well, we promised we wouldn't talk about it on the air, at least not yet. <laughs> what happens in Burlington stays in Burlington. <laughs> Isn't that their city motto? <laughs> <laughs> After that, we're going to uh, Spokane and Seattle and Portland, Oregon. So there's still tickets available for all of those. And then also a bunch of other cities. Grand Rapids, Chicago, Madison, Minneapolis, San Diego, Los Angeles, San Francisco, Indianapolis, Cincinnati, Columbus, and Cleveland. There's a list of 28 other cities that we're working on booking. You can find all the details and see the tour trailer as well over at lessisnow.com. All right, Ryan, who's next up? This next call comes all the way from Seoul, South Korea. Let's listen uh, to Clyde's question. If you could only choose one social networking or one piece of social media, uh, what would it be? 
and why? Twitter, Instagram, which one would you stick with? I think the first question to ask here, because this is going to be a highly individual answer, right? Because I know my answer is going to, I'm going to say Twitter, but there are some people who, like I was talking to Bex over, about this over the weekend, and she's like, I don't like Twitter at all. She's like, I'm just going to delete it off my phone. Like, I don't really use it that much. Mm-hmm. And if I need to, I'll use it on the computer or whatever. So it's going to be different for each person. And so the question I, I would ask myself if I was asking this question, Clive, is how do you use social media? And, and what are you going to use it for? And, and there are sort of two ways I use it. I use it personally and then, and then from a business perspective or what I would just call a broadcasting perspective, right? Mm-hmm. So Ryan and I will use social media. In fact, we have a social media, media manager, Jessica, who helps post a bunch of different articles. She also ho- helps with some of the engagement on there. But how do you use social media? Because on the personal side, I rarely use it at all. Uh, I mean, I will occasionally post a picture on the Instagram and that's less and less frequent these days. On Twitter, I will I will tweet a pithy quote every now and then, but I use it more as a news feed for me or uh, an, uh, news is, is the wrong word, right? We were just talking about that, like defining different types of news. It's science news or or urban development news. I mean, it, it has less to do with politics and more to do with the things I'm interested in. Right. Uh, there's one thing I, I follow called Strange Maps, and it just like shows different maps that, uh, you know, here here is the world split up by time zone if all the population were equal in each time zone. I mean, it, there, there are these strange maps that I'll follow. So I, I, those are things I get value from. And so what do you get value from? And how are, you, how are you using social media? Are you using it to broadcast? Are you using it to communicate with other people? Or, or are you using it to pacify yourself like I was yesterday? And I was on Twitter. I don't remember being on Twitter. And that is a problem. And, and so I, I'm, I'm committed to, to fix it. In fact, um, I'm going to try an experiment, Ryan. I dare you. I'm pulling out Put my Put that phone. bunny and beaker away. <laughs> hey, <laughs> that's for the next podcast we're recording. <laughs> um, well, while you're doing what you're doing over there, man, uh, I would definitely go to Instagram as mine. Uh, but that's because it's, it's like Twitter in the sense. I feel like people don't really post long posts when they do. I just don't read them. Uh-huh. Um, I don't post long posts, one or two sentences. Uh, I like not being confined to the 140 characters. Although I like, if you look at my posts, I don't think I've ever gone over 140 characters, but really for me, it's, uh, it's like an ephemeral way to catch up with friends. Like I love seeing, uh, the Bergamot. Um, it's a, a band mm-hmm. that Josh and I, uh, have kind of developed a friendship with. They opened up for us in Grand Rapids, like during our 2014 tour, but it's cool to like, see what those guys are up to. It's cool to see like Collins adventures, um, I like to post very deliberately, uh, like pictures from different travels that Mariah and I have. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's like, uh, I, I hate getting on social media period, mm-hmm. but it, it is one of those things where, um, if I'm looking for an ephemeral, you know, five minutes and I don't feel like p- pulling up the Kindle app and reading, uh, then I can get on Instagram and and I think, and in the same token too, like I, I like to support the people that are on there. Like, hey, I know we don't talk, mm-hmm. but I do want you to know that I do care about what's going on in your life. And thanks for sharing what's sure. going on in your life. Um, that that could probably be taken to a really crappy level because, <laughs> meaning that there are better ways to show people that you care about them. Yeah, for yeah. Sure. But well, uh, but yeah. Uh, but I also know that some people do equate, you know, the they equate like with likes mm-hmm. and and that's oh, dude, unfortunate. I'll, I'll like something on facebook and yeah. so, and people go oh my god ryan nicodemus liked my <laughs> liked my post and you know what like i'm really happy that i can make that person happy yeah yeah i, I get it man i um i've had actual famous people who have tweeted us before and it's like it is the it's like oh you know this person you know like the film or whatever and and um i, I understand that that you know, it sort of gives you that bit of validation, but then I have to start questioning, like, you know what, man, I'm I'm totally valid without that. Right, like how much validation do I need? I don't ever. It's funny, man. I feel like I like Oprah Winfrey could walk through this door right now. Yeah, and of course I would be like, oh my god, Oprah Winfrey. But like at the end of the day, you'd be like, what the hell is she doing? <laughs> I'd be like, what are you doing here, Oprah? No, <laughs> um, no. Like at the end of the day, though, uh, I feel like because we've had such a slow build with this. Yeah, 
that like I would, you know, treat her like any other person. It's like when we met Rob Bell, although I was like really nervous when we did that podcast with Rob Bell. Really? Uh, yeah. Like so nervous. Well, Why mainly because I was just like, you know, I was like, I really want to do a great job for Rob. I want this to be a great Rob cast. Mm -hmm. I want this to be good for him. And you know, when I put pressure on myself like that is when I, uh, typically get nervous and, 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 and I'm not, uh, you know, totally up to par. Anyway, it was a fine podcast, but when we were sitting there in his kitchen and like having a juice, it was just like, wow, like Rob's regular dude. Yeah. He's got kids and a wife and it's a really, you know, and that's, that's how I feel now. Like, so I guess what I'm saying is to your point of, I don't need the validation from a celebrity or someone famous. It is certainly is nice to get to know people, but for me, it's even nicer to like get to know someone and realize like how they are just a regular person. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the cool thing is I think sometimes social media can augment that, right? Yeah. Social media uh, for me, the reason I say Twitter is uh, there was a time, especially like 2010, 2011, where most of the, the friendships I have forged on the online world uh, initiated from, from Twitter at yeah. some point. And we had far fewer followers on there, although it, it's, the platform that I enjoy the most, and we certainly have the, the smallest audience out of that compared to Facebook or, or Instagram or even Google+. Plus. Um, I could not even tell you what any of our followers are at right now. Well, I, I don't know the specific numbers, but I can tell you that it's appreciably less on Twitter because mm -hmm. fewer people use it, right? Mm -hmm. But it's still my, my personal favorite because I've been able to connect with more people. I think it's a better communication tool. And I think the 140 characters, that brevity forces... Uh, so it forces people to improve their writing. You know, they say brevity is the soul of wit. And I think that's true. You, you, you're forced to, to have these, these limiting constraints that make you more creative. Mm -hmm. And, and so I'll use that as a writing platform for ideas. Sometimes you go back and look at my tweets at JFM, you'll see that pretty much the only thing I tweet these days are just little lines of, of essays I'm, I'm working on. And so if you see like a tweet storm all of a sudden, I all of a sudden came up with six great lines. And what will happen is most of them won't fit into the essay or they don't work just right. And so they won't make the essay, but they at least live out there on Twitter. And someone, if it inspires someone, I think that's great. But what I don't want to do is add to the noise. And, and so I'm constantly trying to turn down the noise. So the experiment I want to get back to, I'm going to do real quick, is I'm going to delete social media apps from my phone. A double dog dare you. I'm doing it right now. Watch this. I hold it in. Wait, that didn't work. It won't let me delete it. Oh my God, it's a government conspiracy. <laughs> <laughs> the reptile people did it. They're putting fluoride in the water. Oh my God. The pedophile government. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to do that with you. All Let's right. see who lasts the longest. Nice. Okay. All right. You're to here, folks. Done. What does the winner get? Their what? pride back? That Google one. Plus, dude. I don't, you know, the I don't ever use Google Plus. Why do I even have that on my phone? Instagram. I, see you later, Instagram. See you later, Twitter. See you later, FaceTime. <laughs> Wait a minute. That's not a, <laughs> an, oh, that's an app, but it's not social media. <laughs> How are you using FaceTime? <laughs> <laughs> None of your business. See you later, Snapchat. See you later, Periscope. Wait a minute. Do they still exist? Oh, yeah, man. We did a Periscope last month. Oh, here's the other cool thing, though. We, so... So let's talk about this real quick, Ryan. Um, we will still use social media for work, obviously, right? It makes sense to broadcast. And, and if anything, we want to improve the ov overall content of the nonsense that's going out there. Mm -hmm. we, we never post anything that's clickbaity or, or anything like that. We post only things that will add value to your life. And, and that's really our intention. And so, so that, that's the appropriate use for us. And I've, I've seen several people do this. They'll have a separate device for their work uh, content. So I don't, I don't have that, but we yeah. sort of do because we have podcast Sean here. Yes. And uh, um, you know, as a work expense, we, we pay for his, his phone. And so when we're on the road and we want to do a live broadcast from Facebook Live or uh, post some stuff from Instagram Live, Jessica will also be with us uh, th this round of, of tour stops coming up. So we have people we can rely on. It's like having, it, well, not like, it is having a second device. We're using someone else's device and, and me not having these personal, uh, having these, these items on my personal phone is going to help me. Uh, and I'm going to be interested to look at the tracking now that these are gone from my phone. Yeah. L look no, at me that. too, man. I can't wait. I, I, I do love this app, man, because 
like you said, like as soon as I realized something was tracking me, like I definitely picked it up less. Yeah. And, uh, and it's, a, it's so it's gamification for the good. And, and that's also a good thing. Like, so, th- you know, like the Fitbits that people have or whatever, or the, mm-hmm. y- actually you do this on your phone now. You can check your steps, right? Yeah. That's gamifying it. The, and I freaking hate that word, but that's the, 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 the word they've coined for the, for, for the good. So instead of like acting on your, your habits to constantly twitch for the next tweet or next like or whatever, uh, it is okay. I'm gamifying it. How little can I check my phone? Yeah. Or how many steps can I take today on my health tracker? Those yeah. are that's a positive way it's of using gamification. You know, it's funny. I uh, you know that I like to play some Pokemon every once in a while. Okay. Mariah and I'll be walking. Is that still a thing? Well, not I, for me anymore. I, I'm not judging it, but I, I did. I thought it was like a a, a limited time engagement. Oh no, dude! They're doing the same thing. Like, how oh, can okay. we make them play more? So uh, Mariah and I'll be walking around, and it is fun. Like, I'll let her catch a. Pokemon, I'll catch put whatever, dude. Like it's really ephemeral. Um, it's just something we'll do g- to goof around with each other, like while we're walking around. That's Miz- cute, I think. I mean, I mean, it, it, you're doing it together, though. I mean, that's yeah, wh- which is great. But the problem is, they started doing the the how many days in a row have you got on and caught a Pokemon oh, thing, and it started yeah. making me like feel like, oh shit, I got to get up and at least catch one so I can keep that streak going. And as soon as I had that thought, I'm like, I'm getting rid of this game. Mm. And I just deleted it. Yeah, but yeah, it's it's nuts how they can make you want to play it more anyway yeah you get you you get addicted so real quick on on the addiction side of things what we talked about addiction is wanting without liking uh but but really and our addictions even these small ones or like shopping is is, what could be a huge addiction the the article we'll link to with the wired article uh from from adam alter he he talked about a woman in there who was $80,000 in credit card debt because she, she had had an ideal life, but she had this shopping addiction hmm. and, and hid it from everyone. But now there's the World of Warcraft addiction, the video game uh, addiction. There's the smartphone addiction. And so I find that in my own life. And what, I've, what, I'll, what I'll see here by removing these apps from the phone, it doesn't mean I'm, uh, again, not a Luddite, but I will probably bring them back at some point the question is when, when is it appropriate and how can I use them more appropriately? I think you, if you swing the pendulum from one side to the other, eventually you figure out what is the comfortable middle, mm-hmm. but it's usually closer to the side you've swung to where you were trying to get away from. Yeah, uh, absolutely. It, It'd be it, interesting it, to get, cause now I got to go to my computer to check Twitter. Uh huh. It'll, we should get this app for our computers as well. Is it possible? I think, I think, I think they do have it. We'll have to, we'll have to check on that. But yeah. I, I think if not, there is an equivalent app for sure uh, that, will, that will show you the, wh- how much time you're sp- And by the way, throughout this whole, this whole episode, if you have any tips and tricks and everything else that, that we're talking about, if you want to add to any of it, we'll give you a phone number a little bit later. You can call in or send a voice memo to the, the email address. And we'd love to hear what apps you're going to recommend. Now, keep in mind, I do think it's a bit quixotic to, to try to solve the technological problems with technology. <laughs> and and, and you're, you're, it's, it just, if you say it out loud, it starts to sound crazy. Like watching videos that show you how to stop watching videos. <laughs> I'm going to build a robot to kill the robots that are trying to kill me. Right. It, it, it feels that way, right? Yes. So, Clive, speaking of technology, a couple other things before we move on to the next question, the, the last question we have here. But... Um, uh, I'm going to recommend you go back and listen to our technology podcast. It's probably 95% different from this episode. It's all the way back at episode number two at the minimalists.com slash podcast. But also there's an entire chapter about technology in our book. It's called Essential. It's an essay collection, 150 e- essays about 12 different topics of intentional living. And uh, there's one entire chapter in there about technology. Sean, if you could reach out to him, get him the the ebook version of that or the audio book version if we have any more audible download codes it's like a, a six six and a half hour audio book something crazy but there is a a, um, a technology chapter i think you'll get a, the most value from clyde since you're asking that question all right let's move on our next question is from kim in pennsylvania my struggle is since i have jettisoned my tv and begun to visit the internet rather than live on it i sometimes feel out of touch with current events By that, I mean real events, not what Kanye West is doing. Nice man, but, you know. My question is, can you recommend a minimalist news feed? 
And by minimalist, I mean as much as possible lean, objective, intelligent reporting of national and international events in a timely fashion. Well, first off, Kim, thanks for your compliment. Uh, We are definitely listening. And it's interesting because social media is one way for us to listen. And it especially was for the first, I don't know, three, four, five years of, of the minimalists. But once you reach a particular critical mass, it becomes a full-time job trying to just respond to people on email and social media. Uh, the, we find the, the best way. We've, we've, we've slowed everything down quite a bit. When people want to contact us, the, the, the best way, if you want to be 100% sure we're going to see your, your inquiry, you can send us a piece of mail. So if you go to our contact page, it's the first thing we recommend mm. is you can, you can mail us a postcard and we get back to everyone who, who mails us something. Now, we still get a ton and you know, we get a, a P.O. box. Sean's always checking. And we get a P.O. box full of mail, but it's not nearly as, as I mean, can you imagine if every tweet we got, someone had to mail it to us? I mean, we'd have, we'd have to have the biggest P.O. box at the post office, right? And, and so, uh, yes, we are definitely listening. In fact, uh, I'm thinking back to our, our very first tour, Ryan, back in, in 2011. It was basically a listening tour. We went out and we did these, these events with small groups of people, certainly fewer than 50 in, in virtually every city, mm-hmm. right? And, and we'd get out there and we'd listen to what people were struggling with and they, they would hear our struggles. And this, this podcast has been a, almost like a continuation of that in a way where it allows us to listen. In fact, we're doing that with our, our upcoming events at the Less Is Now Tour. We're doing the VIP events beforehand. So if you buy the really good seats, you pay a little bit more for that. But we um, we're doing this special event. We didn't want it to just be a meet and greet where we show up and hug people like that's that's fine. But we we stay after and hug everyone anyway. So if you want to hug, you can always stay after They're They're free and you don't have to pay more for that. But what we're going to do is is have these little listening sessions. We'll have an intimate discussion with the minimalists. And, and hear about your struggles because we found that face-to-face is the best way to listen. You can use these, these tools to augment that listening, but ultimately it, it's, it, is about, it is about cutting down the barriers between us so, so we can listen better. Now to her question, Ryan, I love what she said. She said, I now visit the internet, but I don't live on it. Yeah. That was I, it's funny when the question was developing, I thought she was going to talk about how the internet time has just become more now since she got rid of her, her TV. Uh, Cause that's, that's uh, what happened to me when um, I was going out with the, without TV for a while. It was like, yeah, but I can still get on there and stream Netflix and veg out or, you know, mm-hmm. um, it's very easy to do that. No, that's great that she's been able to fill that time. I'm assuming with more useful things than, than watching TV, but right. But getting rid of your, your pacifier and then not, resorting to the internet to to fill that void yeah is, we, we, uh, that's, we that's to, really commendable we have to find something better to fill the void with right than right. some other pacifier which it's very easy to do it's uh when people quit smoking they often gain weight because they move on to binge eating right, right. oh does he just snickers bar every time I'm, i want to smoke <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, i had a teacher who literally did that oh my in goodness. high school and uh well he was telling us the story about it okay but he was talking about how he was you know, 60 or 70 pounds heavier than what he was. And that's because the attitude he adopted was, Oh my God. And then he was like, well, I just moved to the fun size Snickers. <laughs> but then like, still, it's not a healthy. Oh no. <laughs> healthy no. Replacement. Yeah. So, so we do have to figure out what to replace it with. I, I went without home internet for five years. Uh, so summer of 2011 till summer of 2016, uh, there was one small period in there when we were living together, Ryan, where, where we had it shared. Mm-hmm. But other than that, I, I didn't have home internet for just for a very long time, basically. And, and it helped me reprogram. Uh, but you learn a lot about loneliness, right? Mm-hmm. And so especially when I got rid of my phone for a few months, so I did another experiment where I got rid of my, my cell phone for two months. So no internet at home, no TV, no, no cell phone. And like you really rediscover yourself and, and you rediscover books and you rediscover loneliness and boredom and, and, and being able it's to... It's a great experiment. Like if it wasn't for Mariah having to go... Uh, on online to do her coding stuff, uh-huh. I, we'd get rid of it. Yeah, I mean, and we went so long without it in this apartment that we're in. Mm-hmm. And Mariah just event, she was just like, "Please, like, I need, I need to do this work online." Yeah, 
it's you know it's 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 a good setting for her to, and she's really good with it like right. for me like i got it's like sometimes i'll just turn the wi-fi off on my laptop because i'm like yeah. yeah yeah well i've, I've had I'll start to get sucked in so i've had readers recommend this in the past where they will have their significant other not give them the wi- change the wi-fi password and not give it to them so yeah. they don't have access to the wi so if one person needs it, the other one doesn't yeah so that could be an interesting experiment for you to try out for a while um but in, anyway, uh, getting on to her actual question, she, she says she feels out of touch with current events. And, and can we recommend a minimalist news feed? Now, now, if I were to take that literally and say, if you want like m- stories about minimalism, <laughs> the, you, your, your best bet is to follow two places. Uh, follow us uh, because we uh, Jessica curates really great um, news stories, news yeah, articles about yeah. simplifying wardrobe and uh, sometimes the environment or waste or there all these different stories and they're not even always opinions that we necessarily agree with, but they're great perspectives right. and, and they're interesting and they help us identify and understand other people's stories. So yeah, if you want to follow the minimalists on social media, you can do that. And, and I think that's w- one place to go. And the other one is if you want like really great design and travel stuff with respect to minimalism, uh, specifically, you can follow our side project called Minimalism Life. Uh, on Twitter, it's just at minimalism. So that one's really easy to follow at minimalism. And it's minimalism life on, on Facebook and minimalism life on Instagram as well. And it's just well curated, beautiful stuff. But I think what she's act- actually asking is what, w- how can I simplify my my news stream yeah. basically and not feel like I'm out of touch? Yeah, I mean, I would suggest uh i mean twitter is it's it, it, it to use it only for news would be a good idea because i used to use it before we <clears throat> became the minimalist it was just my i would follow news and i would follow the news i wanted to follow because you can curate it but i right. also follow the artists and like bands and, and and people that i i was interested in what they were doing that was a type of news for me right so she mentioned she was not interested in kanye west so then she would not follow kanye west on twitter exactly but someone might be and that's okay Right. Um, but, but yeah, it's, uh, it, it's a great way to curate a, a very minimal news feed. She asked for specific websites, to, like specific news sources. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, every news has their own slant, right? Yeah. Like every news outlet, even like, like the two that I visit the most are, are, uh, NPR and BBC. Like those are the ones that if I'm like, okay, um, did that law pass or like there, there are some things that I'm looking out for in the news every once in a while. Like I'll go to one of those, those sites, but even then sometimes I feel like, you know, some of their stories are, are biased. So yeah. I don't think there's like a number one trusted news source. Um, but I, I know I can certainly get there and for the most part, get some like unbiased opinions, even though they'll still be sprinkled in there every once in a while. Sure. And, and if you're doing the, if you're doing the Twitter thing, uh, liberally unfollow, people if, if so if you, if you if you see if you're following i don't know the the where is she she's in harrisburg if you're if you're following the harrisburg times on twitter i'm assuming that's your newspaper um and they I start the harrisburg gazette <laughs> that's the competitor oh um <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, if you're following them and they start posting a bunch of stories about Kanye West, unfollow them. It's right. okay. And and then find something else to follow, right? There'll be recommendations and, and, and stuff. And then you want to keep it below the Don, Dunbar's l- rule, so or Dun- Dunbar number, 150, uh, that, because we can't. it's hard for our brain to... to ha- I mean, I keep it way below 100. I try to keep it below 50, if possible, fo- following fewer than 50 places now on, josh on let's not make this a contest no i mean what can I'm saying, follow the least amount of people well no because then <laughs> you just follow no one and and that that is and i mean i could do that very easily i could just go unfollow everyone i'd unfollow you first ryan <laughs> thank god <laughs> <laughs> but uh, my point is that like you, if it's overwhelming unfollow if it's too much unfollow but if it if it just makes you uncomfortable because you don't like the perspective that could potentially be a good thing so so i'm going to encourage you uh, Kim, to to slow down your news a bit. So if you want to get off on, uh, if you want to get offline altogether, then uh, you can what I what I call slow news. So I subscribe to the New Yorker. If you want the other side of that, you could also subscribe to the National Review. So you sort of have a, a left leaning 
magazine, weekly magazine, and a right-leaning magazine, and it slows it down. Now, granted, there's still pernicious ads that will be in that magazine, so we have to be aware of that. When you see an advertisement, tell yourself, this is just an advertisement. I was watching the 60 Minutes thing uh, t- this, this morning, Ryan, yeah. while I was preparing for this, and there was this uh, drug advertisement that, like if you have low level arthritis like <laughs> it, it wasn't even like for bad arthritis you could take this once daily pill and the side effects I shit you not man the side effects one of them was cancer wow if you have light arthritis want to get rid of it here's a cancer pill good grief and it and always s- amazes me too like diarrhea vomiting bloating but your acne will be cured <laughs> 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 and uh, so I, I think uh, point being is you'll still see advertisements there. Just be aware that when you, when you see advertisements, say this is just an advertisement and, and move on. And if you want some newspapers, New York Times versus Wall Street Journal uh, or maybe even the L.A. Times if you're out west. You mean the fake news, Josh? Uh, <laughs> I don't even know what that means. <laughs> yeah, uh, let me, let me you say You know what? Actually, I love that you don't know what that means. Which p- it just goes to show that you... Don't pay attention to that much news. Well, I, our news these days is less fake than ever. Oh, yeah. Um, if you go back to the 1800s and look at the, the nonsense news from back then, it was virtually all fake. Like, it's laughable fake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It, con man fake. Yes. And, and, and yeah, snake oil salesman. So, uh, New York Times versus Wall Street Journal, it's a left versus uh, a right uh, side opinion, but I get most of my news honestly. When when things do creep into to my cranium, it's from podcasts. Yeah, and and so I do listen. I listen to a lot of podcasts, and I switch it up. Uh, and again, that's another thing I unfollow and unsubscribe liberally uh, to to those podcasts. But uh, and, I, and there are ones I get the most value from. I know that I'll probably never unsubscribe from. But there are a lot that I listen to that have the, both sides of the opinion. So I'll give you a couple of those real quick. If you want politics, Bill Maher, Real Time with Bill Maher. And Glenn Beck. Those are the two. I don't agree with either one of them most of the time, actually. But it allows me to land somewhere in the middle. Yeah, at least you can get, like, an opinion on both sides. Yeah, like, I, Rush Limbaugh is entertainment to me. Like, it's just funny to hear him go off on stuff. Right. But, like, that's how I look at it, as entertainment. But it is, uh, and by the way, I don't listen to that religiously. I'm just thinking about, like, the times I have listened to it. But mm-hmm. But it's like... Yeah, dude, getting a dose of the far right and then getting a dose of the far left. Like, you yeah. can at least, uh, yeah, like you said, fall in the middle. But what I like about it, too, is it just it helps me get outside of that bubble that I feel like sometimes I'm in politically. Mm-hmm. So it's just nice to get the other side of it. Yeah, I, I, there's one other one I listen to that is it's called Left, Right, and Center. And it, it provides all sort of three sides, you know, mm-hmm. the left, or the right, and the center. And it's a weekly politics podcast. So if you're going to listen to one podcast about politics, that's probably it gives you the most balanced approach right there in a, a really short 30-minute burst. And then um, oh, is there anything else I listen to? that? I mean, I listen to a lot of podcasts that, that have nothing to do with news, but news tends to creep into them. Mm-hmm. And so I'll hear about, I'll hear about all of the, the big things. Yeah, Colin Wright uh, lets us know, know things. He does a really good job of like incorporating current events with with uh, with his show. Yeah, he does a great job with it. I, I, I agree. He... Uh, and he ties it into whatever whatever he wants to talk about that week, which which is great. I mean, it's called Let's Know Things because he wants to learn things uh, together with you. Mm-hmm. Well, Kim, we were already in Pennsylvania by the time this comes out, so I can't give you any tickets to the Less Is Now tour. But but we had such a blast. <laughs> it was so fun. Um, but I would love to give you a copy of our book, Everything That Remains. It's my favorite book uh, of everything that we've written. It's my favorite thing we've ever created, actually. It's a memoir about the last five years of our lives or the five-year transition, really, from being these suit-and-tie corporate guys to minimalists and how we simplified our lives in the process. So, Sean, if you could reach out to her, give her the book or the audio book version of that, I would really appreciate it. And we'd love to hear what y'all have to say. So if you have a, a comment or a tip for any of our callers today, then leave us a voicemail, 406-219-7839. Or you can also send a voice memo to podcast at theminimalists.com. We will air our favorite comments and tips on the next episode. Dude, we should come up with a new email address for Sean, and it should be podcast Sean. At the minimalists, that's it. I know that that the email address is podcast at the minimalist, but I like in my brain, I'm like, oh, it's good. yeah, we should just send it all to podcast Sean at the minimalists.com. <laughs> that is not an email address, it will not work. <laughs> all right, all right.
let's move on to our hashtag Ask the Minimalists lightning round, where we answer questions from social media. Josh, I just deleted all my social media, though. <laughs> well, uh, I've got it on my, my computer, thankfully. Oh. We are on Twitter and Instagram at The Minimalist and Facebook.com slash The Minimalist uh, during the lightning round. This is where Ryan and I each do our best to answer uh, each question with just a short, shareable, less than 140 character response. We'll also put the text to these minimal maxims in the show notes so you can copy and share our pithy answers on social media if you'd like. Our first question comes from Heather. I'd like to hear your strategy for staying active and engaged on social media while not becoming too dependent on it or consumed by it. All right. My, my short answer to that one is to live intentionally, we must continually ask ourselves, is this useful? And just to add on to that real quick, Ryan, I, I mean, that applies first to the stuff in our lives, but then it can, it can bleed over to every, every other area of life, relationships, career, passions, whatever. Is this useful for my life? Does it serve a purpose? Does it bring me joy? And if not, I, I'm willing to let go as, as we just did. Yeah. Uh, I answered her question with a question. Hmm. What would life be like if we checked social media only once per day? Mm, that is good, man. With Facebook, I check it during the weekends. It's two or three times a day, again, because I'm monitoring the page um, and answering people's questions and staying active uh, you know, with that community that we have and supporting that community. Um, but during the week, man, like I will check it on average once a day, but like I did not check it yesterday. Um, which were like, probably I've got a hundred notifications sitting in there now. <laughs> um, but, uh, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's something that has really, really helped me avoid that anxiety feeling of seeing that notification. Oh my God, I got to get that notification off my screen. It's just like, I'll just check it. I don't have like a certain time I do it at night. It's more like, okay, uh, I'm sitting here twiddling my thumbs yeah. um, instead of going to, cnn.com it's like all right i'm gonna go and knock this facebook stuff out but some days i forget to check it yeah. but uh but yeah i wouldn't i would encourage people out there to to yeah sit, if it's not once a day if that's like too crazy then make it twice a day but but uh but be intentional with it sarah writes why do you use social media as a minimalist hypocrite no she didn't say that i, I just threw that in there <laughs> how do you recommend using it intentionally well i'll answer the first part uh to that my, my short answer is just three words. Minimalists aren't Luddites. Yeah, I wrote, uh, tools are as useful as the user. Mm, that's good. Emily wrote in, how can I use media more mindfully when a lot of my interests, photography, writing, and reading, involve interacting online? All right, well, my short answer to that one is let go of distractions, make room for intention. Yeah, I think I... Uh, touched on this earlier today. This is much more pithy than what I was saying uh, earlier in our conversation. But I just said, the more we practice self-control, the better we get at it. So yeah. Emily, I don't care where you start. Maybe it is starting with that once a day checking uh, uh, social media mentality, or maybe it's twice a day, but put something, some kind of limit on on yourself to start practicing that self-control. And as the uh, as time goes on, the, and the more self-control we practice, the easier it gets. It's like anything else in life. Practice makes perfect. Our last question is from Miguel. What is essential that we must watch, consume, and participate in? Mm. All right. Well, my answer to that one is essential is perspectival. You don't have like a list of shows that he should veg out on <laughs> i've really been enjoying the young pope recently oh dude i've only seen the first episode of that i need i need to check that i forgot all about that um it's just funny though i was just thinking i wish there was a list of like all the things all the movies you should watch uh -huh. all the shows you should the best shows you should watch but everything is so uh well like you said perspectival uh -huh. Um, there isn't just one magic list. Like the list for me is going to be different, uh, than the list for you and so forth and so on. So, uh, I had fun with this question. I said, watch yourself, consume less, participate in your local community. 
Yeah, I think I think that's that's beautiful, man. So, what must you watch, consume, and participate in? Watch yourself, consume less, participate in your local community, man. That's great. It's a great way to end it. All right, well let's uh, let's move on. Let's move on to added value. This is the portion of the show where Ryan and I um, we talk about something that's added value to our lives. Recently, I'm going to do something a little bit different today, Ryan. I'm going to recommend two things I've already recommended. I'm going to recommend them again because I'm getting value from them still. Awesome. So uh, I, it's the best album of the year so far is Drake's album by far. It's there's it's a good album. Yeah, th- th- dude, I love else like has yeah, fallen to second and third, fourth. I mean, there's some other great albums I've recommended this year. Elbow's uh, album is great. Um, Aquilo's album is outstanding. Mm-hmm. Um, what was the the American Teen album we, we recommended? Yeah, Khalid. Uh, Khalid, yeah. yeah. Uh, that one is outstanding. But Drake's album, I just keep going back and listening to it. So it, it's Dude, growing awesome. on me even more. It is It is funny how like it is one of the... Every single album that he has put out, even like that Take Care album, which I love, man. Yeah. It, it, I had to listen to it like two or three times to like really... Appreciate it. Yeah. yeah. It's really weird. It's funny how albums are like that. Radiohead's uh, album, when it came out last year, was the same thing for me, where it was like, man, this isn't really that good. And then I listened to it a couple of, a couple of times, and I'm like, this album is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and the second thing I'll recommend is uh, Bex and I just watched this together. I, first time I watched it, I watched it by myself, which I don't usually do. But uh, Gerard Carmichael has that special called Eight. It's on HBO, and we... we sat down we made the time to to watch this together and it was better the second time even though it's a i'll say comedy special to me it's an honesty special he he uses jokes to really is it just one is it just like a one and a half hour special or yeah, is it's it like, like an a, hour hour long probably okay, okay. yeah yeah it's it sounds like a series no it's I just guess, yeah. it's it's just him in front of a crowd and and it's part of it's certainly comedy but it's just like overt honesty and at first parts of it will turn you off and you're like wait he's just being i mean he's being ex- exaggeratingly honest in some cases but it it was just really good so gerard carmichael he he's definitely my top three comedians uh if he's not number one he's up there with chris D'Elia and anthony jeselnik i mean it's it's such a good special man and, and bex just watching her crack up like the whole hour man like there's like actually not the whole hour <laughs> you don't the, even watch the tv you just like to watch Bex, Bex crack up yeah I mean, she's <laughs> so beautiful man like i just watch it and i'm like oh it's anyway well uh, <laughs> what's been adding value to your life recently right <laughs> you know what's so funny man is like i feel the same way about mariah but for some reason i hate making that public like i hate making our relationship because i feel like that's the one thing i have uh-huh. that people can't dive deep into yeah yeah and uh, that's so funny, man. It's yeah. uh, I think you and I are like you're becoming more extroverted. I mean, Bex was telling us the other day how you were, um, you guys were watching a special. Maybe it was the what, Gerard. What is his name? Gerard Carmichael. Uh, Gerard, Gerard Car- Carmichael. Gerard Carmichael. Yeah. And you were like, uh, maybe it was that special, but you were like, we should have people over and watch this special. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and she's like, really? I'm like, actually, no. <laughs> <laughs> But here, that's how that's good, good it was. I was like, we should we should invite like Ryan and Sean and maybe Nate over and like we'll we'll uh, and I'm like, that's a lot of work, man. I'm just gonna tell them to watch this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my recommendation, dude. I went to this game night, um, not last Friday, but the Friday before. Anyway, it was the, uh, the DJ who interviewed us here locally. Oh yeah, remember he invited me over for a game night. Yeah. He had this game called uh, Captain Sonar. So it requires eight people to play. You can't play with less or more. It just requires eight people to play, two teams of four. And it is like Battleship on steroids. Like it is It is so much fun. So uh, I'm just recommending a game for those board game lovers out there yeah. um, who like to have like big game nights. Like this is an eight-person board game, and it is so much fun. Um Man, if I if I try to explain exactly how it works, I'm gonna not really do it justice. I'm gonna do a bad job of of paraphrasing the rules. You have to have eight people. Have to have eight people. Okay. But yeah, it's uh, it is the best way. The best way to describe it is Battleship on steroids. So if you like Battleship, Uh and you like steroids, (laughs) (laughs) now like what kind of steroids? Is it like TRT or are we talking? (laughs) 
<laughs> All right, never mind. <laughs> no, it's a, it's a great game. I will. I highly recommend it. All right, let's move on to right here, right now. This is where we get to talk about what's going on in the lives of the minimalists. This episode is running long, so I'll be really quick here. I already mentioned we're going on tour. It's the Less Is Now tour. We're going to give a talk about minimalism. We'll record a live version of this podcast, and we'll dish out a bunch, a bunch of free hugs. 47 cities over at lessisnow.com. Yes, we are coming to a... If you live in North America, we are coming to a city near you. Uh, it's within a very short distance. If we're not coming to your city, it's the next city over. So there's a bunch of them there. Lessisnow.com. Also, our documentary, Minimalism, is finally available worldwide. It's on Netflix everywhere where there is Netflix. And if you don't have Netflix, don't worry. It's available worldwide on Vimeo and a lot of other platforms as well. Just go to minimalismfilm.com. Speaking of video or film, we have two web series that are out there right now. One is called Simples. It's an animated web series. It's four different episodes. You can see all four episodes now. They're short episodes, anywhere from, I think, two minutes to six or seven minutes long. And they're, they're little bite-sized bits of intentionality you can share with other people. Uh, that's out there right now. It's on our YouTube page. It's youtube.com slash the minimalists. And also while you're there, you can see the Making Minimalism web series. So if you like their documentary, you want to see how we made it, how we went from just an idea and, and zero dollars to having a, on Netflix and, and millions, if not tens of millions of people have, have seen it at this point. And it's been a really huge success. You can see all the behind the scenes stuff. Our very talented director, Matthew Avella, has put that together. And it's we really have, about how Matt made the movie. I yeah, mean, yeah. <laughs> when every time I say, yeah, we made this movie, like in my head, I'm like throwing quotes around we. <laughs> <laughs> we made this movie. It's really good. I'm, I'm really happy with the way the making minimalism has turned out. It's, it's, uh, I think it's good if you just want to, like you said, see behind the scenes, but also some of the episodes get a little technical, right? Uh, for, you know, aspiring filmmakers out there documentary aspiring documentarians it's out nothing there, that's like going to be over your head though it's not right like, exactly exactly like it's it's beautifully done like it's entertaining and then it also you can, you can actually learn something from it too exactly yeah that's great all right that's all i got advertisements suck but if you want to support this show you can over at the minimalists.com slash donate you can donate one time or, or monthly if you want to help us out that way we keep this 100 percent advertisement free and also, if you do find value in what we do, we'd really appreciate a review on iTunes or wherever you listen to podcasts. Ryan, you got anything else? All I have left are some voicemail comments and tips from our listeners. Hi, my name is Yarden, and I'm calling from Brooklyn, New York. I um, had an idea uh, regarding minimizing baby stuff um, in regards to a question that appeared on the parenting episode. Um, I find it incredibly hard still to get rid of anything that has my baby's name on it. Uh, he's almost one year old. Uh, but I do find that with time and as he becomes more ingrained in our lives, it gets easier. And I don't feel that I need to hold on to every single thing. So my idea is that um, in, in, in line with um, the minimalist attitude in general, to revisit things, um, every few months, I kind of take a look at the things that I've kept around, um, cards that we got when he was born, little gifts that we never used, stuff like that. And every few months, I find that I can get rid of a couple more things that don't actually add that much value or mean that much anymore. Um, so, you know, it's kind of an ongoing process. It's not a one-stop shop, but it works. Hey, uh, calling from Minneapolis. So you guys don't really have a spot for this type of thing on your show, but your last episode about jobs made me think that it would be fun to call with an update. Um, so my name's Jess, but you would remember me as Intergalactic Jess with the exclamation point. Um, so back in your careers episode forever ago, you read my iTunes comment. Um, I was 24, got offered an impressive sounding job and turned it down because I wanted to pursue more of a meaningful life, um, more valuable life for myself. And um, a lot of it was because of the values that I found from, you know, discovering minimalism and specifically like your guys' blog and the podcast really helped me find those values so I could recognize when something wasn't aligning with them. Um, and I'm 25 now, full-time personal trainer and yoga instructor, and I'm making actually really good money working in a career which aligns with my values. And I am really passionate about health and fitness and uh, the work that I do 
it really helps my clients to improve themselves and it's really rewarding and it's contributing a lot. And so I'm really happy. Um, and another cool thing is like I can use minimalism a lot when I'm helping these people and helping them get focused on what's important to them and living, you know, just better in general. And once I've paid off my student loans, my boyfriend and I are going to save a bunch of, a bu- up a bunch of money and hit the road. We're going to go rock climb around the country because that's the main passion that I have in life. And I want to give it my all for a while. And then who knows? But um, thanks again. Like You've had a big impact on my life and really positive knowing you guys and your work. And um, thanks again for killing it. And I look forward to seeing whatever you guys decide to do. Hey, this is TJ. First of all, I just wanted to say, Josh and Ryan, thank you so much for putting together all of the work that you do. Um, I was introduced to you guys at, uh, on Netflix in the middle of December as soon as it came out and completely blew my mind. Um, I really connected with the story that you guys told. and I'm a child of the 80s, born in June of 81 uh, in Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, my parents uh, moved further east than that and got divorced, and there was plenty of issues there that sounded very similar to your issues uh, in your story. And um, I kind of grew up thinking that I could make a ton of money and be very happy and pursued a career on the West Coast for about eight or nine years and made a boatload of money, or at least I thought I did, and spent a boatload of money. And um, when I saw your documentary, it really resonated with me. And for the last two months, it's made uh, just such a significant difference in my life. So I I can't thank you guys enough for doing what you do. Um, I, I really have told a lot of people in my family as well that, you know, this this could be the answer to why we're all so stressed because it, it seems like I've been asking the question for a long time about uh, why are all of the successful people that I know so unhappy? And it seems like the, the more successful you are, the bigger your business is or the more money you're making, ultimately, you really just aren't very happy. So when I saw what you guys were doing, it seemed like such a good answer to that question. So again, thank you very much. All right, y'all, that's it for this episode. If you have a question for The Minimalists, give us a call, 406-219-7839. You can also email a voice memo to podcast at theminimalists.com. And if you leave here with just one message, we hope it's this. Love people and use things because the opposite never works. Thanks for listening, y'all. We'll see you next time. Every little thing you think that you need Every little thing you think that you need Every little thing that's just feeding your greed Oh, I bet that you'd be fine without it Every little thing that you gotta have Every little thing that you gotta have you gotta reach for and you gotta grab oh i bet that you'll be fine without it so tear your eyes away or tear